This Weekend Post, answering your questions about Photo Raw. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to InPost. Today is a Q&A episode and all the questions are about Photo Raw. Got a bunch of questions recently about Photo Raw. It's a new program, you know, getting up to speed on it. Got some questions about it. That is awesome. And uh, if you want to get really deep into it, check out my ebook, Photo Raw Essentials. It'll tell you everything you need to know about browse, develop, effects, layers, masking, you know, exporting. Pretty much everything is in there, I think, except maybe the resize module. But it's all in there and it's less than 10 bucks. So with that, let's get into today's questions. First question is from Dave, and he asks, where is the global detail slider that used to be in Photo 10? So in Photo Raw, we have this new tone and color pane, and it does not have a detail slider. It has structure, and structure will add, as I crank this up, it'll add microstructures, small details, and so forth. We don't have a big detail slider. And as Dave noticed, if you go to local adjustments, oh, hey, look, I've got this detail slider, but this is asking me to mask. I want something global. So we don't have a global detail slider, but we can use the local adjustments as a global detail slider simply by inverting the mask. So what we can do here is go to our mask icon, tap it, invert, and so you have a white box, which is now everything. Of course, this is lowering exposure. Let me reset that. And then we can choose the detail preset, for example, and that's going to crank preset up everywhere. So as I do this, it's going to affect the entire image. So you don't have to do any masking. You can just use the detail slider in local adjustments. The trick is invert the mask before you start using the slider so you're affecting the entire photo. The next question is from Gary, and he asks, how do I use the masking bug? So this bug is just, it's bugging him. Hey, how about that? Terrible pun. It's annoying him. It's confusing him. It's, it's not intuitive to him. All right, well, um, let's take a look at... The masking bug. Now I'm going to use a local adjustment to do this, but the bug for a local adjustment, it works the same way as the masking bug in layers, the same way for a masking bug on a filter in effects. So the controls are all the same and you can just use them in different places depending on what you need to do. So I've got this photo here and the foreground is very bluish. There's a lot of blue in the sky and that's reflecting down onto the foreground. It's got a pretty bad color cast here. I want to correct. I want to warm up this, this bottom part of the image. So I'm going to choose this local adjustable gradient, which is really fundamentally a bug. And what that does is now I have some local adjustment changes here. I'm going to preload like my, my look with warming the temperature and keeping the exposure the same. Now I have this cursor here. You can see right in the center of the frame, that is the bug cursor. And I can choose where to put that. I'm going to drop it right in the center. Now, by default, the top part of the image or this, you know, this bug is getting the effect and the bottom is not. That's just the default. If I press the O key on my keyboard, you can see what's going on here. The white part is where I'm applying the warming in this case, and the dark part is where I'm not. You can also change that view. If you go into the view mode, oops, sorry, wrong, mask view mode, red overlay. And I'll press the O key again to show that. And so this is where I'm masking away. I'm not allowing these changes to be shown. And this is where the changes are being applied. So we have a couple of controls here. We have the center one here, and that just moves it around. So we can position it where we need to. And I'll probably position it right around the horizon. And then we have a dotted line. That's a feather. So I can stretch it out or make it a very hard edge. So again, I'm going to press the O key. And while I adjust that, let me get my cursor back there. There we go. You can see I'm getting a fade or I'm getting a hard edge. As for something like this, I probably want to fade. And then the last control is this little small circle, and that lets us rotate the bug. So I can, I'm going to press the O key to turn this off. I want to rotate this 180 degrees because what I want to do is I want to warm up my foreground. So I could warm it up. I can now, I can, I can play with these sliders and I can change things. You can see I can overexpose or raise things up just to make this less of a bluish cast there and play around with things. So the main things with the bug is you've got your center circle, you position it, the smaller little circle on the, to the side, that's your rotation arm, and you have a feather. Now there are a few other shapes of the bug. You have an elliptical shape 
and it works the same way. You've got a center point, you can rotate it, and you can feather it. The elliptical one has two different versions. You have center and edges, and you can kind of see what the difference is. Center means I want to apply this change to the center. Edges, I want to apply the change to the edges. The last one, this reflected gradient, that one's a little interesting, and it applies the mask or the effect in the center and your arms to do filtering, or sorry, filtering, feathering, you can press the O key again, those are individually controllable. So you can use a softer feather on top and a you know, harder feather on the bottom or a harder edge on the bottom, whatever you might like. Uh, this one in particular is really useful when you've got a band in your photo that you want a certain uh, filter or effect applied to, but not everywhere else. It's really often used with uh, the tilt shift option and the uh, lens blur filter and effects, so that's a good use for it. So those are your uh, controls for the masking bug. Hope that helps. Last question is from Horst, and he asks, can I use Google Nick with Photo Raw? The short answer, Horst, is yes, you can. The longer answer, any application that you can open a photo file with directly, you can use as an external editor from Photo Raw. And now, uh, how do you know if something can open a photo file? Well, take a Mac, for example. If I were to go into the Finder, grab an image file, drag it, and drop it onto an application, if that application will open up and load that file, you're good to go. So you can't use things that are specifically designed to be plugins to Photos or Aperture or Lightroom or things like that. It's really an external editor approach. Now, how do you access it? Well, from within Browse, you right-click on an image, and you'll see about two-thirds of the way down, after our edit in, develop, and effects, and all the things in on one, I've got a list of other applications. And some of these on one will detect automatically. Some it might not. And if you've got an application on your computer that doesn't exist or in this list, you hit this send other application. That'll open up your Finder or Explorer. You go to find wherever your application is, choose it, and then from that point forward, on one will remember that application. Now, one other thing you will need to potentially play with is the file format that browse is going to send to the application of your choice. So in the preferences, I've hit this gear menu down in the lower left, we got our preferences. Under files, we have this, it says it right here, what are you going to use when you have an external editor? PSD, TIFF, or JPEG? And now that just depends on what's the application you want to use, we're going to want. As I recall, Nick liked TIFF files not so much PSD. So you'd need to change this to TIFF if you want to launch something over to Nick. There is only one choice. So if you've got a series of applications you like to use and some of them prefer PSDs and other prefer TIFF, you will have to change this from time to time and there's no getting around that today. But that's how you use an external editor like Google Nick or anything else that can open a photo file from within Photo Raw. And that's going to do it for today's in post episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, Dave. Gary, Horst, thanks very much for sending in those questions. They were great. And uh, tip of the week is send in questions. I'd love to hear from you. You'll get an answer to your question, usually in a day or two. And I might use your question on a future episode. And that's really a big deal, right? You can go brag to your friends and you know be ultra popular in the neighborhood. <laughs> in all seriousness, those questions coming in are awesome because it makes me think about my photography. And hopefully my answers are helping you. We all get better together. You've heard me say that before, yada, 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 right? Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting. How do I use the masking bug? It's just confusing. I don't understand it. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's scratch my nose. Ah, and then we'll try that question again. <laughs> At least I didn't have to pick it.